here we have a USB flash drive that came in for data recovery. And the drive is in pieces. Let's see what kind of Hiroshima we're gonna find on this drive. Yeah, and what's the customer's ticket number? My USB flash drive failed suddenly and was unable to open it. Despite disk manager and device manager indicated working properly. I sent the USB to a data recovery service company, but the USB was unprofessionally handled. Without a duty of care and returned to me a week later in pieces, advising that the data could not be recovered. I took it to another company which informed me that what was initially diagnosed as a software problem has been made worse as the chip got damaged when data recovery service company inserted the USB stick into the reader wrongly, creating an additional hardware problem. The USB would be sent to the USA. It will take approximately two months and there is no guarantee that data will be recovered. Looks like we're not gonna work on this drive, but let me just take a look quickly at the drive. One thing I do not like to do in the shop is waste time. And the drive has already been to two shops where they damaged the chip as the customer indicated. And look at this. <laughs> what the... Nice. The company who worked on this, they just lifted up the chip. Or it could be that the customer worked on it himself and that's what happened. Nobody knows, but why would a data recovery company return the drive in this condition? I do see all the pads, probably, possibly all the pads on the board. And I do not see any pin damage. But everything on the right side is soldered as one pin. My six-year-old daughter would not do something like this. One bridge for all the pins. That's not possible. Let's do a quick visual inspection. The controller chip was taken out and soldered again, as I can tell. Flip the board. Two R2 resistor, let's measure it. Why do people do this? That's the question I've been asking myself since I started this business. Why do people do this? I still do not have an answer. If we measure this one, we have the right value, 2.2 ohms. And I do not see any missing components. The USB socket looks good. And we're gonna assume everything on this side of the board, which is not much, is okay. But that's where the important chips are, the controller chip and the NAND chip. Not much going on here. If we just randomly measure those components for a short, the capacitors, no short anywhere. And not much going on, that's it. Right now all we can do is remove the chip and resolder it. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, then we're gonna invoice the customer for repair temp fee, return shipping, and send it back to him. That's all we can do. It's been to two data recovery places. And now all of a sudden I'm gonna be able to fix it after it went to two shops. I did not do miracles.
Okay, so it looks like we lost audio throughout the video. Every time I record, I say to myself, change the batteries and record fresh. But today I recorded without changing the battery. Batteries on, on this, they last about four hours. Four hours, so maybe two sessions, three sessions, and I'm done. Uh, I use rechargeable batteries, and I have a set of maybe 20 batteries, but sometimes I just keep the same batteries, and I say that we can do one more session, and we end up losing audio, like I did today. So we have to put batteries in the transmitter and in the receiver, two double A's, two double A's, and that's how it goes. That's how I lost audio, because the receiver, the batteries were dead. So it's all right, I'm gonna fast forward if you're already at this point of the video, you already know that I fast forwarded because no reason to not fast forward if I'm not talking, even though I shared a lot of useful information, but what can you do, right? Let's go ahead and try the drive to see if it will work. Am I recording now? Yes, okay. So <laughs> let's see. Chip is soldered on nicely. We checked the pins on the chip. We checked the pins on the controller. We checked the capacitors. We checked the resistor. We checked the socket. Everything is checking out good. But if we plug that drive in and it's not recognized, then we're going to give up on it immediately without thinking twice about it and send it back to the customer. I did not hear a tone. I do not see a light and I do not feel any heat on the board. All right, so at least you got to see me in this video, right? Who cares about the flash drive? That's it, we're gonna end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.